let's talk about all the books that I've read in the month of June. So hi everyone, I'm Leah, welcome back to the channel, and yet yeah, today I'll talk about everything I've read in June. I didn't read that much, as you can see. Half of the books are ebooks, so I can't show you those, but still, it's just eight books in June. And yeah, for me, that's not a lot. I usually read ten books at least, and I don't know what happened, I know that one of those books that you can see right here took me two weeks, I think, to finish. So maybe that's why I couldn't read that many books as usual. I don't know. It kind of put me in a reading slump, but it's not a bad book, so I really don't know what happened. And on top of that, I didn't really read a book that was amazing. 4.5 stars is the best book that I will talk about today, so 4.5 is still good, but the last really great book that I gave 5 stars to, like the last real long novel, was something by Stephen King in March, I believe. and. Not a single five-star book since then. I really don't know what is happening. I don't want to talk too much about that right now, though. <laughs> we want to talk about the books that I've read, right? So today we will go through chronological order. So we start with the book that I've read first in the month, and then we end with the book that I just recently finished, like a few hours ago, really. I read mostly books from my TBR, so nothing too surprising about that. I didn't get to some of them. I still have, I think, six books from my June TBR that I will carry over to July, but you'll see that in my TBR. But yeah, I think that's still good. For me, it actually is, because I have TBRs with like 20 books on it, so <laughs> of course I won't get to all of them in a month. But yeah, I just like to have a variety of books to choose from. Anyways, um, let's start with the first book. So the first book that I finished was the fifth book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. This is Barbarian's Prize. And I gave it 3 out of 5 stars, which is average for the series. Not the best book, but not the worst for sure either. So yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's Ice Plant Barbarians. We all know what it's about. And this one follows... I really don't know their names. Like, none at all. No. No, can't recall a single name. But... Um, the girl is very popular among the aliens, everyone wants to court her, but she's not having it. And then a friend of hers comes up with a competition to distract these males, so that they won't talk to her all day long and she can just focus on herself. She has a little gardening project, which was very interesting, felt a little short because these books are mostly about the smut and the romance and not so much the plot. And yeah, I mean, this competition was interesting. Not too spectacular, but it was something new in the series. And I like the couple. They were very cute together. I was rooting for them. I felt the chemistry between them, so that was fine. I can't remember the smut in it. I think it was good. If I can't remember anything, it can't be very good, but it can't be bad either, right? One thing that I didn't like was this friend of the main character. Her name was Josie, I just looked it up. She was treated very poorly 
by the other aliens, not the humans so much. Like the friendship between main character and Josie, that was fine. But the aliens, it seems like they fucking bullied her and I don't get why. She's very good human being. Why the hell are they doing that? The next book will follow her, so that's going to be very interesting if the bullying keeps on going. And yeah, I don't know, we already found out about the couple in the next book, between Josie and whatever the alien's name is. So yeah, that was interesting. Interesting dynamic, felt like a hate-to-love relationship, which I don't always love, but maybe this one's good. I'm excited to read these books. They are very short, very fast-paced, so you can grab one book per month and just read it in between some other books. Then the next book that I've read was also a digital book. This is Starving Anonymous Volume 2. It's a manga that I've read online. And yeah, again, just like with Ice Planet Barbarians, I typically read one book from the series per month. I could read through the whole series because it's not very long in just, I don't know, a few days. But I just like to grab one book per month and just take my time with it, read some other books afterwards and in between. I don't know, I don't like rushing through series because I can get bored if it's just the same world over and over and over again. But yeah, the second volume, it was not as good as the first one, but just slightly, just very slightly. It was very interesting because there was a subplot in it talking about the past of one of the members within the group. And that was the best part of this volume, for sure. I loved this subplot. The plot itself within the facility was okay. It was not as interesting because not really much stuff was happening that was new to the reader. I, I don't want to give too much away, but it was very disturbing <laughs> about a mother-son relationship and they are different from other people and well it's very original for sure i've never read anything like it and it even makes sense to talk about that because afterwards it makes sense for what is happening in the usual plot from the manga so yeah, i'm really looking forward to the other volumes, maybe to find out more about other members. I don't know what's going to happen next, but yeah, I'm really excited about this manga. It's very disturbing, but um, yeah, I love that kind of horror, so I can recommend it. I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars, so the first one got 4 stars, I believe. This was just slightly less entertaining but still very good. The next book that I was able to finish was Tress of the Emerald Sea. I started reading it in May I think but I finished it in June and this was the best book of the month <laughs> by far I think. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars as I've said earlier. This was almost perfect. Almost. It's a pirate story, which I typically don't like, but I love this one, and it follows Tress, who is living on this very isolated island, nothing much is happening on there, it seems like it's a very, very small island. She's not from a very wealthy family, but she likes to enjoy the little things in life, she likes to collect stuff. For example, cups. She likes collecting cups. And she's also friends with... Oh my god, I really don't know the name and I really don't know what exactly he was, like as a title, but he was... You can imagine him as a prince, basically. Something like that. And... That's obviously not okay, because 
she is rather poor and he's not so they shouldn't talk to each other they are also kind of in love with each other and that's not okay as well that's even worse than being friends with someone like that but yeah they don't care they like each other i love them together such a very cute couple and yeah stuff is happening and the male romantic interest is being swept away and she's trying to find him so she goes on this adventure on this ship with a pirate crew and yeah it's just so unique for something that sounds so basic if i'm explaining it <laughs> oh my god there's also such a cool magic system with these spores in the world there's not really water in this world it's something else and it's very dangerous there are different types of it and some of them are deadly if you just touch them and Tress is experimenting with that stuff <laughs> and it's really like a witch story but it doesn't have anything to do with any other witch story that you've read before it's also very fa fairy tale esque like it reminds me of beauty and the beast or the chronicles of narnia and the princess bride which i haven't read but everyone says that and Brent Sanderson even himself said that he was inspired by that one so i guess that's fitting it also reminded me of the wizard of oz or Diana Wynne Jones books. I also loved all of the characters that Tress gets to know on this pirate ship. The crew is so interesting. I would have loved for this to be a series, really, because I do miss the characters already. And I mean, I'm gushing about it, but why didn't I give it five stars then, right? It's because of the ending. It's not about how it ended for the characters, that's perfectly fine. It's about this twist that was happening in there. It was very science fiction-y and very comical all of a sudden. Like, it, it didn't feel as serious as it, the whole story was before. I don't know. Maybe it was some kind of humor that I just don't get again because I don't really like humor in books, as I've said. And yeah, I don't know. It felt weird. Just a couple of pages or chapters, which was so, so weird. So I couldn't give it five stars for that. But yeah, everything else was just amazing. Everything you can t think of. The write writing style is amazing. The design of the co of the book including the cover is amazing the characters are amazing the world building is amazing the magic system is amazing the plot in itself was amazing so it's just this ending that was so i guess funny and science fictiony just didn't vibe with me oh yeah and let's not forget about the animal companion a rat hilarious I liked that red. That was. It makes sense now why I like the red, but I can't tell you. But um, yeah, the, the red was cute. And when you're reading this, there are also a lot of references to some of Brent Sanderson's books. Like, I didn't get all of them for sure because I've only read Elantris and Mistborn Era 1, but. I already got some references, like mostly two. I can think of two references. There was one about Sazed from Mistborn, who's a character in that. He was mentioned once. I would so love to reread that that section again because now that I've read the last book in the Mistborn trilogy, I, I would just love to know what exactly was mentioned in here. And then also the volcano stuff was mentioned in here as well, which is also part of Mistborn. And yeah, I love references like that. That's why I love The Dark Tower by Stephen King. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that. The next book that I finished was the second 
book in the Percy Jackson series. The first one is The Lightning Thief. What's the second one called? I have no idea. I don't know. But it, this one is about his brother, Percy's brother, the Cyclops, who has a name but I can't remember. <laughs> the series is a reread for me. I've read these books when I was a young teenager and I just wanted to get back into the world because of the upcoming series and because I've never read every single book in the universe. So yeah, I'm excited to read some of the books that I've never read before, but I have to get through the original series first, which isn't a bad thing. I enjoy these books very, very much. What I love about the series is all of the mythology stuff. There are so many references. It feels like every single page has something to say about mythology or has some event in it that resembles something or a character or whatever. It's so, so good. This really feels like an entertaining read if you know about all of this stuff, but it's also very entertaining if you do not, because you can learn about mythology which is just very well written in that aspect. I gave this second book 4 out of 5 stars. And yeah, I'm excited to read more books in that series. And then I finished The Penelope by Margaret Atwood. This is a very short book about Penelope, who most people know because she's the wife of Odysseus and she had to spend her time alone while he was in the Trojan War and on his Odyssey afterwards. But this book is more than that, much more than just this tiny aspect about her. We learn about her childhood, how she grew up, how she became the person that she is, how she married even Odysseus and well, it's obviously also about the part when he was away and the suitors that wanted to try to get her attention, I guess. But it's also about the time after that, when Odysseus came back. And even after that, when she died. Because this book is written from her perspective while she is in the underworld and I don't know how she does it but she tells her story from there and she also talks about living in this underworld and how it is constructed how she's meeting people that she knew of and it, it was really interesting there's also songs in between written from the perspective of the 12 maids it was 12 right who were killed by Odysseus because I I don't want to give it if you know you know and if you don't just read the book <laughs> and you will know and yeah it's just it was emotionally touching for sure I wish it was a little longer even but that's always a good sign if you wish to have more of a story than you got unless you were really dissatisfied with it <laughs> um, but yeah yeah I can recommend this one this is also part of a loosely connected series about myths and legends written by different authors so yeah, that was the first one and I'm excited to read more of those because yeah I just like the concept of this one and I can always reread about myths because there's always something new to discover, some new interpretation interpretation by the author, or just some new perspective on different things that others wouldn't focus on, or maybe even things that you just come up with, as with the underworld stuff. I've never written... what? Yeah, I've never written that, for sure. I meant I've never read about something like that before. So, yeah, it, it's just... mythology is just always such an interesting genre to dive into and margaret edward obviously is a fantastic author 
I also gave this book four stars just because I was missing some depth, some themes or motives, whatever it's called, themes, right? Yeah, th some themes could have been explored just a little bit more in detail, but other than that, it was really good. Okay, next up is this book, the last book in the Mistborn Era 1 trilogy. The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. This is the book that took me two weeks to get through. And, I mean, you could say it's 700 pages, two weeks, that's okay, happens. For me, that's way too long. <laughs> I would have loved to finish it in one week, not two. It took me so, so long to get through. The middle was dragging so much for me, personally, and I just didn't care. It was two six of crozy to me about this group that was trying to do something that didn't make sense for me. Like, the world is literally ending and they focus on this one town to get. I, I just, I didn't really understand what, why the story was just focusing for such a long time on this event. But yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I gave it three stars. That's not a bad book, but it is disappointing. I gave the first book three stars as well, the second book 3.5 stars. So, I, I don't know. Most people don't like the second book that much, and I, I love it the most. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's so disappointing to me. I've enjoyed the other books by Brandon Sanderson, Elantris, five stars. Dress of the Emerald Sea, almost five stars. The Mistborn, which everyone loves, just three stars? How? <laughs> I guess it's just not for me, because I don't like superheroes, I don't like a lot of action, I don't like fighting a lot, and this is just pretty much that. I didn't really like any of the characters, if I'm perfectly honest. I loved Sazed in book one and two, didn't really like him in book three because he was just focusing on his depression and nothing else. That's everything that he did for most of the story. It did change after some time and I did like him then again, but I don't know. I just didn't like how he was handling the situation, I guess, because it just didn't make sense sense to me anyway that doesn't matter i also love that we get to read from other perspectives in this one that we haven't read from before for example spook that was really cool what was happening and also tensoon i hope that's how you pronounce these names i love what was happening there as well but only at the beginning of the book like maybe the first quarter to maybe the first third of the book because they w were focusing on their own story they had a plot of their own and we learn about just some other interesting things that we didn't know of before but then at some point the whole group comes together and is just focusing on one goal one goal everyone is doing their part in this one goal of conquering this friggin city that doesn't even really matter and it just, it got so boring at this point. And it felt like nothing was happening anymore, which is so frustrating because it started so good. I was thinking that this was going to be the best book in the series for me. Because I was really, really enjoying Spooks and Tensoon's storylines. But yeah, I, it did get better at the very end, like I'm talking about the last, I don't know, 10 to 15 pages or something like that. That was great as well. <laughs> but the parts in between, just not for me. The writing style isn't bad in any way. It's just not for me, I think. Because I know that Brendan Sanderson can write stories that I love. And this one is just for people who like Six of Crows, for example. That's something that you can love and... 
I know some people don't like Tress of the Emerald Sea, which is fine as well. Because everyone has a different taste. And I actually love that Brandon Brandon Sanderson can write in so many different genres and well styles that everyone can find something that they enjoy by him. Um yeah, so I don't want to get into spoilers, but the ending was good. It didn't grab me emotionally at all because I don't like the characters or most of them, but yeah, it ended in a great way. I am excited to read more by Brandon Sanderson for sure. I've already ordered the next book, Warbreaker, I believe. And yeah, I'm excited about that one. And also the secret project number two should arrive soon at my doorstep. I didn't buy it from the Kickstarter campaign. I bought it from the Dragonsteel books, like from Brandon Sanderson's website later on and i'm also from germany so i have to wait even longer for it to finally arrive but yeah i'm patient and it's not a problem i can wait as long as it will get here i'm also excited about the third project because it sounds very interesting i don't want to spoil anything because some people don't like that but yeah it has two things just in the title alone that i love to read about so yeah that's everything that i can tell you about the hero of ages i think i like these covers so um yeah i will keep them i think it's the same as with stephen king even if i don't enjoy a book i just keep them because you never know if they will get better in i don't know 10 20 years when you reread them and Both authors have books that are connected to this massive universe in some way. So I just have to keep all the books because, who knows, they might all be connected in the future. (laughs) And yeah, that's just how it is. I am also excited about Era 2, although it's very Wild West inspired, but... Dark Tower showed me that I can enjoy that, so yeah, I'll see if I will. Let's just move on to the next book. The next book that I've read was the second book in the Zodiac Academy series, Ruthless Fate, it's called. Yeah, I gave it two stars, <laughs> and I was being generous. I, yeah, similar to Hero of Ages, I just think that this is not the best series for me. Just because it focuses on the characters and the romance. And not about the plot at all. Like In the second book, I don't think there was a plot anywhere to be seen. The first book had some plot in it, for sure. That's why I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. But this one, the second book, nothing was happening. It was just about the characters, the bullying, weird humor stuff, revenge on something that someone did and then they do something stupid again to that and then the other one is doing something stupid to them again like that's very childish (laughs) i don't like that stuff and it's also about the bullying and somehow romance that is coming out of that I, i i don't know somehow our main characters now love they're bullies and they are making out with them the smut is happening it's starting in this book it's written well which is just even more confusing (laughs) but but the the idea of screwing a bully that wanted to kill you no (laughs) just no i do not want to read about that i will keep going on reading the third book in the series just because i want to know what order these vega twins are in 
something. That's all I want to know. I don't like anything else. I don't like the characters. Again, they are childish and I, I don't understand what they are doing and why. And it's fiction. Some people can enjoy that. I can't. I'm sorry. But that's okay. <laughs> and the plot is non-existent for now. And the fantasy aspects are fine. I like the concept more than what is actually happening. I like that they are Medusa-inspired characters. There's Pegasus, vampires, sirens, werewolves, dragons. That's cool, but nothing is really happening with that. They just are there. So, I don't know. Elemental magic it's okay it, it's great to have it in there but it's not something that is very original in comparison to other elemental magic systems in other books so yeah maybe it gets better but i might have to dnf the series at some point but if you enjoy it great that's amazing I can't even get through them fairly quickly like others, but yeah, I mean, it's not that bad, I think. It's just not for me. It does have some controversial stuff in there, for sure, that I kind of question, but I do like, for example, extreme horror, which other people can question. You, you can do it, yeah, for sure. It is questionable at some point, but I somehow enjoy it. And I think this applies to this one as well. Some people just can enjoy that and like that, and others don't. And then the last book that I finished just a few hours ago was Belladonna, the first book in a series. I don't know if it's a trilogy, but I know that there are three books planned for now. And this is a young adult fantasy book, but it is also about so much more than that again. Because it does have witches, kind of. Not the witches that you think of, for example, in Harry Potter. Not those kind of witches. I'm talking about historical fiction witches. Because it's also historical fiction. It has fairy tale aspects. It has ghosts. And it has death as a character in it and it's also about medicine it's a mystery it's a murder mystery there's a lot of stuff in there and then the main character also has some interesting powers and she can not die you learn about that like in the first few pages so it's not a spoiler she just can't die Whenever she, I don't know, stumbles down a staircase, she will recover. If she eats a lot of belladonna, she will recover. She won't die. And yeah, it's just very interesting. It started out so good, so dark, so atmospheric, with this scene where... Signa, the main character, is still a baby and her mother is presenting her on a party and then everyone dies <laughs> except for Signa, of course because she can't die and then she starts to switch households on a regular basis because people just seem to die around her and she never finds a real home. Well, that is until she is brought to Thorn Grove, which is a big manor, and she instantly connects to this family. And yet, yeah, there's one girl that is very ill and about to die, and she's just trying to find out what is happening. Can she do anything about it? Because she really likes that girl. And yeah, she also gets to know a lot of the other people in there. They are relatives in some kind of way, like they are cousins. And there are a lot of romantic interests in there. This is also romance, yeah, <laughs> another genre. 
that's something that I didn't really like because this is a very short book like it has 400 pages pages yes okay but the font is very big so it doesn't read like 400 pages and there are three romantic interests for our main character three yeah you heard me right in this first book <laughs> and it's just a lot if it's also focused on so many other aspects in that book and yeah i don't know it felt a bit rushed not very good explained i didn't really feel the chemistry with most of these interests i did like the interactions between death and signa at some point but they were awkward as well they, signa hates death from the start of the book and i don't really get why that he, she just hates him because people around her die and she just blames him for it but <laughs> he's not doing it on purpose and then at some point she just instantly loves him and i don't i didn't get that either like where's this coming from but i did like the interactions between them after that I, they are a cute couple but i don't really see how they got there <laughs> if that makes sense in any way and yeah the murder mystery i didn't really like that as well but i just don't like murder mysteries that much and yeah this book focuses a lot about that trying to solve this murder but there's also a lot about her powers just exploring that more what can she do what can't she do can she maybe get better at it find out something new that she can do whatever that that was interesting and also the historical fiction aspects i just always enjoy that stuff again as i've said witches medicine and just attending balls and entering high society if you've never done that before learning about etiquette and that was interesting i love that so I'm very split on this book. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars now. But yeah, I, I don't know. I will keep going for sure because the ending sounded very intriguing. There was a new character introduced and that was really interesting. Although we, as the reader, could have known that this was going to happen. Some of the plot is told kind of to you if you pay attention and the murder mystery like the culprit was obvious i think at least my first guess was right at the end so i kind of knew what was happening and it was really really surprising but yeah. there's a lot of historical fiction in it that was interesting also about the servants at this manner historical fiction and fantasy is always something that i like the covers are amazing as well. I want to have these books just for the covers <laughs> in my shelf, if I'm being honest. But yeah, I did enjoy it and I want to continue. So yeah, I don't know what else to say. I don't really see this book often on booktube. But yeah, if you like very young, young adult books, not middle grade for sure because of all the romance, but it's not smutty in any sense. There are some hints at the erotic scenes, but the act itself is never written in detail. And it is kind of romantic. There was one dance scene at a ball, and that was very, very cute. I really like that one, so it does deliver in that aspect. It's just that I don't grab books for characters or romance or murder mysteries or the ghosts oh yeah i didn't mention that the ghosts um they are there <laughs> if you like this kind of stuff it will be interesting to you but i just don't like ghosts in books but yeah i mean it has a lot of stuff in there there will be something that you enjoy for sure so yeah let me know if you've read it because i would love to know opinions on this book because yeah as i've said i don't really see it often and the next book is coming out in august i believe so it's good that i've read the first book now <laughs> if the second book arrives i can 
just grab it and read it so yeah this is the whole wrap up now that's everything i read i didn't manage to read anything else and i don't even have a really big book apart from hero of ages with its 700 pages dress of the emeralds is not really a big book no i don't think so i i don't know i just didn't read that much i guess i hope to change that in july for sure so if you want to know what i plan on reading there i will post my tbr in a few days and yeah the book that i'm currently reading is the cruel prince by holly black because i had to read what i was picking from my tbr game so it's a shame that i didn't get to it but i did start it so i'm counting that i did read a few pages not a lot but i did <laughs> and it's the only book that i'm currently reading so i'm just counting it it's my game i don't care <laughs> and yeah i will see you in my next video i hope you enjoyed it and take care and happy reading Bye!